næste Bøje Larsens blog. Jeg håber, du vil glæde dig over den video, jeg præsenterer i dag. This video is about the discussion about artificial intelligence, AI, and its dangers. Later in this video, I will show you three clips of experts who think that AI is very dangerous, more dangerous than an atomic war. The experts are Elon Musk and two experts who have been responsible for developing AI. You can easily find them and other critics by searching for AI on YouTube. Their arguments against AI are mainly focused on AI's dangerous effects in two relations. One, many people, for instance, lawyers, scriptwriters, and doctors will become unemployed because AI can do their work better. Two, and worse, AI will take over decision-making from humans. But mankind has been in that situation before, and here I mainly refer to point one. There's no denying that AI has the potential to automate certain tasks, and this has historically led to job displacement. Examples from history include the automation of telephone operators with automated switching systems or the decline of manual typists with the advent of word processors and computers. While some jobs become obsolete, new ones emerge. For instance, the IT revolution led to a slew of jobs in software development, IT support, and more. Similarly, the AI revolution may lead to jobs we haven't even imagined yet. Some people work on training AI models, improving AI-human interaction, or integrating AI into various sectors. In many professions, AI can act as a tool that augments human capabilities rather than replacing them. For example, doctors can use AI to help diagnose diseases, but the human touch, understanding, and experience remain irreplaceable in treatment and patient care. Jobs that involve repetitive tasks or data analysis are more susceptible to automation. However, roles requiring creativity, emotional intelligence, or complex problem solving are harder to automate, in spite of what the AI critics say. The challenge is that the workforce needs to adapt and upskill, which requires education, training, and support. If AI leads to mass unemployment without proper transition mechanisms, it could lead to economic and social challenges. Potential risks include reduced consumer purchasing power, increased wealth inequality, and social unrest. On the flip side, if managed well, AI can lead to increased productivity, economic growth, and new opportunities. In conclusion, while AI will indeed cause disruptions in the job market, it's not a foregone conclusion that it will lead to widespread unemployment. The outcome depends on how businesses, governments, and societies prepare for and manage the transition. Investing in education, retraining, and creating a supportive environment for affected workers will be crucial. To be more concrete, we can look at earlier inventions that experts also expected would have bad consequences. Telephone, initial reception, many saw the telephone as a novelty or luxury. Some thought it was an intrusion into their privacy, and there were fears it might reduce face-to-face -face social interactions. Negative predictions, it was predicted to render the telegraph system obsolete and lead to its workers' unemployment. Actual outcome, while the telegraph system did decline, the telephone industry created a plethora of new jobs, from operators to infrastructure builders. It revolutionized communication, strengthening business operations and personal connections across distances. Railways, initial reception, the iron horse, as trains were sometimes called, was seen by some as a noisy, polluting monster. There were concerns about land acquisition for tracks and the potential impact on horse-related jobs. Negative predictions, people predicted accidents, said the noise would drive away wildlife, and believed railways would disrupt the rural serenity of the countryside. Actual outcome, railways transformed economies by making transportation of goods and people faster and more efficient. It led to the rise of the tourism industry and urbanization, creating many new job opportunities. Radio, initial reception, while there was excitement about the possibility of wireless communication, there were also concerns about its potential misuse. Negative predictions. Some thought it would decrease newspaper sales and reduce social interactions, with families no longer gathering to read or talk in the evening. 
actual outcome, radio became a powerful entertainment, news, and education medium. While it did challenge print media, it also provided them with a new platform to reach audiences. Instead of reducing social interactions, radio became a communal experience. Television, TV initial reception, TV was met with excitement and concern similar to those accompanying radio. Its visual element added both allure and additional apprehension. Negative predictions. Critics believed it would kill the radio, reduce reading habits, and negatively influence young viewers. There were fears of physical health impacts, like TV radiation or deteriorating eyesight, and concerns about sedentary behavior. Actual outcome. While TV did reduce the dominance of radio in home entertainment, radio found niches in cars, workplaces, and as a local information medium. TV became the primary source of entertainment and news for many, and while there are valid concerns about screen time and content, it also became a medium for education, social change, and global connection. In each of these cases, the innovations brought about significant societal shifts. Although some of the fears and predictions materialized to an extent, they were often balanced out or even outweighed by the unexpected positive changes and new opportunities these innovations introduced. The key takeaway is that technological advancements often come with both challenges and benefits. The extent to which societies can maximize the benefits while mitigating the challenges depends on adaptation, regulation, and innovation in response to these changes. The critics of AI are highly intelligent people. I do not doubt that. But I also believe that they represent what I will call now ISM. By that, I mean a kind of thinking that focuses on what is happening now and the dangers we face now. But mankind has experienced and survived such threats before. I will now show the three clips from AI alarmists, which I promised you. I will not write subtitles to everything they say, but write the most important statements here and there. Thank you for watching my video today. Please subscribe. Civilization ending. Block my words. AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. As the algorithms and the hardware improve, that digital intelligence will exceed biological intelligence by a substantial margin. It's obvious. I'm really quite close to, or very close to, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. Uh, you express your reservations about AI and your views about that. Yeah, I think it's, it's the singularity is probably the right word because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, this intelligence substantially is greater than that of a human brain. Yeah. AI is much more advanced than people realize, and the pace of progress is much greater than people realize. That's what it, really what AI means. It's not like a robot running around. The robots would simply be, they'd be like a figure of, of the AI. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear weapons by a lot. Um, mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Are so brainwashed by productivity that it's impossible to stop AI. You look back in 2027 and say, shit, why did we listen? I don't need to scare people a lot, by the way. I just want people to wake up. But I don't know how much louder I can scream. I get such aggressive bashing comments on social media. You've just killed my mood because you didn't suck. With AI, there is sadly a point of no return. We talk about AI. And you need to listen to what he has to say. First of all, AI is coming. We can't change that. It's way too late to stop it. Secondly, it's going to outsmart humans. It's almost already there. Bad things will happen. Bad things will happen. Mo, a huge welcome to the Lead on Purpose podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I. What is your experience when you're on that side of the Do you think that there's a real danger? that if we mishandle artificial intelligence, it could literally wipe us out. Yes, it's all, not only me. Uh, many of the experts in the field, if only the people who developed this technology, share some of the same fears. Uh, you know, what everybody needs to know about AI basically is just two things. It's the first tool in human history that can make decisions by itself, 
and it's the first tool in human history that can create ideas by itself. You know, atom bombs, in the end, they empowered us because they couldn't make decisions how to use them. The human needed to make the decision. But AI can decide who to bomb and can create completely new ideas in everything from finance to religion. So that's, so that's very interesting because... A power that escapes our control. You know, it's one of the deepest fears of humanity for thousands of years, and now it's, it's actually happened. Then all those people, millions of people who currently work in factories, they're going to be out of work, yeah. and they have no income. So they can't buy any products that the robots are making in the factories. So that economic model collapses, doesn't it? Or am I being an idiot? No, I mean, this is one of the dangers. Now, it's not likely that there'll be a complete disappearance of jobs. As old jobs disappear, new jobs will emerge. The two big problems are, fair, are first, how to retrain people to fill the new jobs. You lost your old job, you need to retrain who is going to finance that, who is going to support you. Uh, and the second thing is the geographical differences. There could be an immense demand for more people, for more jobs, let's say in California, Whereas other countries or other regions of the United States completely collapse. I mean, if I'm like an accountant or a lawyer or somebody like that, where a lot of your work is based in the accountancy case on number crunching, in, uh, if you're a lawyer, a lot of it is case studies, you know, with existing case studies, developing law and so on. I could quite easily see how AI will very, very quickly make a lot of those jobs redundant because it will very, very quickly make a lot of those jobs redundant any job which is basically data coming in, being analyzed and data coming out, this is the easiest job to, uh, to automate.